Bloom, and also joining us is the son of President Ronald Reagan and himself, a victim of abuse, Michael Reagan. Michael, t tell us the story. How old were you? What happened? Well, yeah, yeah, really take you back. My parents divorced when I was three. Yeah. So I was between two homes. Mm. I was in boarding school as a young kid. All, the Hollywood crowd sent us all to boarding school. When I was in third grade, my mother put me into an after-school program. First time I spent, like, days at home after school. And what she didn't know, that the man who was running was a, was a pedophile. Did, did you, I was looking. I did was, he groom you? Was he? he got his eyes he was, yeah, I was looking for that father image. Yeah. He taught me how to throw a baseball. Taught me how to throw a football. Taught me, you know, how to be a young boy who Ronald Reagan would be proud of. Mm. And when I took second place in a in a yo-yo tournament, nobody got first. But by the time I got home that night, he had exchanged my second place for a first place finish. My parents framed it, put it over my bed. Mm. Ultimately, what would happen, because that began the process of being sexual molested by him about three days a week. I'd be the last one he picked he would take home at night. Wow. Ultimately, he took me up to the Santa Monica Mountains and uh, had me take my clothes off. And he took photographs of me. Mm. And uh, three days later, he said he was going to take me to dinner, told my mom, and he took me instead back to his apartment. And in his apartment, he had a, 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 what I now know as a dark room. And he took a piece of paper, put it in a pair of tongs, and he moved it from one pan to a second pan to a third pan. What the... came up was a pho photograph of Santa Monica Mountains. I'd never seen it. It was magic to a kid. To see the picture come to up. To see the picture yeah. come up. He said, would you like to do one? I said, yes. And he put the tongs in my hand. He put the paper in the tongs, doctor. And he moved my hand from the first pan to the second pan to the third pan. And what came up was a naked picture of me. Uh. And he put his hand on my shoulder like this. And he said, wouldn't your mother like to have a copy? My life ended that day. I walked away from God. I walked away from family. It took me six years to get my mother to kick me out of her house, mm -hmm. moving in with my dad. And then I took it out, of course, on my dad and Nancy and, and everybody else around me. And I would not tell anybody until April 12, 1987, I told my father what had happened to me as a child. And, and that was the first time I told anybody. I told my wife just before that, told my mother just after that. But it's something I lived with during my dad's governorship, his presidency. I worried about those photographs. And mm. seven years ago, doctor, I got a letter from the sister-in-law of the man who sexually abused me who had just died. He was in his 80s. Said he was as evil the day he died as the day he molested me. And he said, Michael, you can, she said, Michael, you can be rest assured now the photographs had now finally been destroyed. Mm. He kept those photographs from 1953 until seven years ago. Disgusting. And, and that's as, as you say, you, you can imagine probably other kids were in those photographs too. It had oh, to yeah, there, had there to was be. because the dark room, as I look back, the dark room I was hanging from the lines were other pictures oh, of other kids, you know. And, and it, 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 in fact, what he had is he had a trunk that was full of photographs of children that he had taken over the years. Oh. These are soul murderers. Lisa, do you, do you deal with these guys in court very often? Do you hear stories like this? I know I, you know, the, the unfortunate reality is in my work, I have to hear these things all the time. Not everyone is as well put mm -hmm. together and courageous as Michael to be able to stand up in public and, and, and really support other victims. Uh, what's your take on all this? Yes, I have represented many survivors of child sexual abuse going back to the early 1990s against the Catholic Church when nobody believed that anybody in the Catholic Church could possibly do something like this. We were up against a wall of silence. I've, I've sued schools and a lot of institutions where children are molested. And I'll tell you, Michael, you are very brave. Uh, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, me too. I don't know you, but I'm very proud of you for speaking out because you're going to help a lot of people. This is the kind of crime that flourishes only because of silence. And by the way, in the Sandusky case, let's not forget about the 14 years of people covering up for Sandusky. And why? Because they put college football ahead of children's lives. I'm talking about campus police, local police, the district attorneys, university administrators, people who saw children being raped with their own two eyes or heard reports of it from credible adults or from the victims and fail to act. This still goes on in the 21st century. And I'd like to see child endangerment charges uh, being brought up against those people. Oh. No more child abuse. No more. We all have to stand against it. Uh, Lisa, you know, you, you, if you're I, right. Go if ahead, if I can jump in, the, the worst of all is not the university or the Catholic Church. It's the institution of the family that protects, and I write in my book, Twice Adopted, they protect, uh, protect Uncle Charlie 
over the child more often than not. Yes. And, e either and that's through silence or denial Absolutely. or actually overt. Look, look at Sandusky's wife. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, did she know what was going on? She, yes, I believe she knew what was going on, but she did not want to know that she knew what was going so, on. In her heart, she knew. Yes. Well, uh, you guys, I didn't have time to get to calls. I apologize, but uh, Michael, your story was so compelling. And, and I, I, again, this, this sentencing of Sandusky and people like you stepping up changes the conversation for the victims. And, and I hope they all Can I up. just tell people who want to help, you can call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. Okay. 1-800-4-A-CHILD. They have hotlines. You can call them and, and start the process of healing. Okay. Absolutely. There's treatment out there. There's the, you, this doesn't have to be, it's a soul murder, but there's treatment for it, and you can come back and flourish. 